Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the SMA X Practitioner Forum meeting today. I'm Tanya Sherba with the product management team, and we have Lin Yang from the customer success group who's going to bring us through the SMA X on AWS topic for today. Um, I'll just go through a couple of housekeeping slides. Lin Yang, can you forward them for me, please? Um, in the practitioners forum, uh, I see some names on here who haven't joined the calls in the past, which is great to see. Um, what we typically do is bring specific topics that maybe it's a new feature or something where we've seen a lot of support calls or maybe some questions in the community where we want to bring technical information and a deeper level of, of information and understanding. Um, and so, so pick a topic and we, and we focus, uh, have a focus session on that. And today, of course, it is SMAX on Amazon Web Services. Next slide. I don't think there's any forward looking information in here today, so we can probably skip that. But of course, there is, uh, there is a bit on yeah, there is. Oh, there is. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. So uh, thank you for that. So all uh, forward looking statement is, of course, covered under a confidentiality agreement, meaning that it is subject to change without notice. And next slide. Um, even if you haven't cover, um, signed our non disclosure agreement, the roadmap information is covered under that. And with that, I think I will hand it over to Ling Yang. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, you're going to cover the slide. Okay, great. Yeah, so uh, this is Ling Yang uh, from uh, Technical Success Team, and uh, I'm glad to uh, to share you with uh, uh, SMA Suite installation on the uh, AWS. And, uh, for the AWS, uh, our service, uh, service management automation uh, suite, we we now have uh, more flexible de deployment options. We can deploy on-premise as well as private or public cloud. And uh, when I talk about public cloud, it includes AWS, and as well as we plan to support Azure in this year, it's in the roadmap. And uh, as you can see, we, we in uh, we include all the functionalities and uh, uh, components for the suite in the in, in our uh, packages like uh, machine learning and configuration management, discovery. So it's a full package of SMA if you familiar with that. And also we, it's one thing uh, I will I will bring more uh, details to you is uh, we publish the AWS marketplace currently for demo purpose. Although it's only for demo and PLC, but it's uh, really easy to use, and I will also share you some more details. So uh, this session is more focused on the uh, AWS. So our agenda today is uh, I will give you some overview of the AWS setup options. We have three different options, and then uh, I'll give you some hints on where to find more information and also some drill downs to different options like uh, how, how do you set up the AWS one, the automated automation setup and manual setups and what's the difference. And then there are some tips. So some something you like performance wise, security wise, uh, what, what, uh, what you need to consider and uh, what are our recommendations. So some tips. And then uh, we will have a Q&A session. <clears throat> so, overview. And um, for overview, we have uh, three different options in February release. Uh, I will go through them one by one, and then uh, the first one uh, I'd like to introduce is the marketplace. This is uh, uh, we're using the AWS marketplace as a one for a deployment option. This is uh, for demo and trial. And it supports up to 10 users. The the benefit for this one is uh, really easy to install. It deployment time is one hour with few clicks. So just few clicks, and then you will have a system up and running in an hour. And it includes the uh, full functionality of uh, SMAX. And uh, <clears throat> to set up that, you need to prepare your own uh, AWS account, like. Uh, you, you need to have your own AWS account and to prepare an, uh, an IP and an FQDN and domain name to, to use this option. 
and it's only for demo. <clears throat> the second option is uh, we prepared uh, uh, automated scripts, uh, two scripts actually, to help you to deploy your production system. That is uh, fully tested in the lab, so it's, uh, uh, it's ready for production usage. Uh, however, the, the limitation for this one is uh, our setup is uh, not using BMZ, as well as it requires you to have your own AWS account. And uh, the, this option will take you one or two days to set it up. The, if, if you don't own your AWS account, let's say your infrastructure team owns that and you only got some EC2 instances, and then we provide the third option, which is manual setup. And that is for production as well. And you can, com uh, you can configure your own DMZ. Also, uh, uh, you, you, can, uh, <clears throat> you don't need to own your AWS account. You can work together with your uh, central IT infrastructure team and then uh, to set up the environment together with your infrastructure team. And this one, the last option is most flexible, but uh, it needs more efforts and uh, to set it up. And for February release, we don't support multiple masters in different subnets, but uh, we plan that in um, in the future. We plan the, to support that uh, in multiple subnets in the future. So, uh, any questions on this slide? And uh, I prepared uh, a polling questions for this. So uh, if you don't have uh, questions, would you like, would you please uh, uh, op uh, answer the, this polling questions? Let me open that and you can, uh, you can reflect uh, what uh, the, what will, which option will fit your purpose. So either it's a marketplace one or automated scripts or manual setup and who owns your uh, AWS accounts? Is that from you or your AWS team? Um, Ling Yang, the polling panel didn't pop up for me this time. Do people have to click on it? Yeah, so can you click on that? Is that open for you? Okay, so I have just... It should be somewhere here. It, so uh, it, click it, on it, it popped up for me, Tonya. Okay. okay, great. Maybe it's because I'm the host. Yeah. So I will wait for a minute for you to uh, to pick up the option, and um, I will go back to the options. So marketplace one is for demo purpose. Automated scripts is for production. However, it needs your own AWS account, and uh, uh, it's set up without DMZ. It's just in one single uh, public subnet. And the last one is manual setup that is uh, most flexible. So we've got a, a couple of answers in, so at least it's working. Maybe there's a an option for maybe some folks that have multiple, or you know, it depends on the situation. So yeah, I think people just need some time to figure out which one, yeah, how, how to use the two. Okay, I think I will wait for this one, which is in progress, and then if he or she finished this uh, question, I will <clears throat> I will <clears throat> start an, another slide. Move on.
Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, some uh, frequently asked questions. <clears throat> Uh, some customer asked for uh, EFS support. Um, we started this support for EFS from uh, February this, and now you can choose to use either EFS or NFS based on the EBS, uh, the the local storage, the EBS. And for medium or large setup, EFS may introduce additional performance uh, degree. Uh, so it's, EFS is not that fast as EBS. So you 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 should know about that. And uh, does, do we support extra load balancer? Actually, it's supported if you config extra load balancers in front of uh, master node, ALB or Apache, at based on your choice. It's, it, should, it should work. And uh, another question is, do we support for multiple AZ deployment for disaster recovery? It, uh, it's not supported yet in February release and we plan that in uh, in the future. And for security groups and rules, it's a <clears throat> very common question. You, you, you want to know what kind of firewalls, what kind of security groups and rules you, you need to set up. Uh, so I listed that here, and uh, we'll update our official document soon about the this part. So, so for external users, Except from internet, we basically we need to open three different pods. Three thousand, which is for our uh, CDF portal, you can turn it off after installation. Five four three is for the CDF uh, management portal. It's for the administrator, and then uh, we have four four three, which is uh, most common uh, <coughs> pods. And for administrator success from internet, we all need 22. That is for sure. And uh, some other parts like uh, uh, the group rules and uh, uh, like the outbound access, like uh, Google ones. Uh, for AWS success, so um, AWS cannot configure the rules um, based on uh, URL. AWS, if you use the security group, you, you, you have to use the IP as your rule. In that case, uh, it will have some, uh, as Google, they will change their IPs all the time. You need to follow that. You need to work with your uh, <coughs> infrastructure team, or you need to do that by yourself. Or you can uh, follow the guide from Google to, 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 to set, it, set this up. And this FTP uh, or Docker, uh, <clears throat> website is for downloading our uh, images. You can choose either of them. Either you can use FTP to download the images, or you can use the Docker pool to get the images. Okay. Some other parts uh, is for internal communications. Just listed here. You can use that as a reference. <clears throat> Actually. Yeah, we just had a request link and yet to go back a slide uh, to the uh, security group slide. Yeah. Um, Tori, I don't know if you have a, a specific question you want to come up and ask. Okay, he said it's fine. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No problem. So, uh, this this is some more security groups here um, in the between the nodes. You can find more information here on our online documentation and uh, uh, keep updating uh, keep updating this these documents and uh, to make them up to date. So you should find the latest information there. So can I ask a question on the notification? Yes, sure, please. Can you explain exactly which notification that is? For example, I get the account activation messages without having done anything related to what you're showing there. Which messages will I not get if I don't do that? Oh, this one, this uh, this notification is only for uh, one of the functionalities in this suite is for the mobility. So if you want to use mobile to send the notifications through our through the Google notification, 
that will go through that one. So it's only for mobility for that functionality. Okay. So your it's, system should overall works. And I did follow the documentation. I don't know if that was in there to explain that and maybe that's why I didn't pay any attention to it because I didn't care about mobile initially but it should be clear in the documentation exactly which notifications that's referring to yeah sure we will update the documentation and that information is not there yet okay and uh, I saw a question in the in the chat is uh, where can we find the AWS manual deployment documentation? It's, uh, we just pre prepared the draft and uh, we'll update that in the official document soon. Hopefully we'll update that in a few weeks. So I would expect in uh, next week, but uh, it may take more time. Uh, if you want to have a try now, I think we can send you some draft or you can wait for the official one. So back to the uh, three different options, now I'd like to give you some more details explanations. So the first option is the marketplace, one click setup, I would, I would say. It's really simple to use, it's just in one click, I would say. And architecture is like this, so you have your own domain name, and then you have uh, internet gateway here. It's all, everything is set it up automatically by the scripts, call for information scripts. So you'll have internet gateway here and uh, a VPC set it up as script, a subnet as well. And then we have our switch here with AFS to store the <coughs> uh, our logs and other storage and also included the embedded Postgres. So you will need the elastic IP or some other public IPs you, you have and uh, it's uh, uh, EC2 instance, 2x large EC2 instance. And uh, it's an end-to-end -end one, uh, all-in-one setup in yeah, whatever. The cost will be uh, 300 to 500, depends on your region. It's uh, different charging. And it's based on cloud formation. The deployment is like, uh, like this. So first of all, you need to prepare these three things. FQDN, just a domain name, and uh, Elastic IP or some other public IPs you have and uh, a key pair. So it's um, uh, just a key pair. So, and then you can run this, uh, uh, run our uh, cloud formation scripts in the AWS marketplace. And then this cloud formation will help you to prepare everything, including the AWS infrastructure, like the VPC subnets and, and everything, and then install our uh, CDF, the foundation, and then install the suite. And then after one hour's waiting, you will be able to access uh, the SMAX uh, on your <coughs> FQDN you define. This is for marketplace deployment, just a few clicks. Um, the second option, <clears throat> it's uh, it's for production uh, usage, so it's a bit more complex compared to the previous one. So for this one, you will have uh, your own domain name and open the pods, the three pods we mentioned before. And then the automation scripts can help you to prepare all this uh, uh, foundations the AWS foundations, the infrastructures, infrastructures like VTC, subnets, the EC2 instances, and the uh, EFS, that's what the scripts will help you to uh, to prepare. And what you need to prepare is uh, uh, RDS, as well as uh, some FQDNs, and you also need to install them, uh, the switch. So, uh, it's the good part is this one is tested for production usage and um, it's based on pipeline cloud formation. The, the deployment flow is like uh, you prepare uh, FQDN, Elastic IP, key pairs, and RDS. And then you will have a, a we pro provide, provided a packet script. You need to run this script. It will generate the AMI in the AWS in your account. 
and then you can run a cloud formation. And this cloud formation will help you to deploy, deploy the infrastructures as well as install the CDF. And what you need to do is to install the suite. So this one is not pre-installed. You need to install the suite based on your configurations on port, uh, on the <clears throat> on the CDF. And then after that, you will be able to access the, the suite. So this one is uh, as we help you to prepare the infrastructures. So the system will repair, uh, require the um, your know, AWS uh, accounts, uh, the the uh, the access to many things like create EC2, create VPN, create SMS, and all this uh, those so access is something we need to run the scripts. This is how how the automated deployment works. Okay. So the last option is the uh, menu setup. So we tested that uh, it uh, as a resolution can be deployed on on-premise. So obviously, it should be able to manually deploy on the AWS. So uh, <clears throat> it's, it's tested for production usage as well, and it can support uh, HA and uh, DMZ. So you can deploy your own DMZ either based on your public subnet or based on your uh, DMZ VP, VPC separated by VPC is also possible, and you can have the ALB, and also uh, it's most flexible, and but it takes more time for you to deploy. So if you uh, your uh, your AWS infrastructure team owns that the infrastructure, you will need to work together with your infrastructure team to prepare everything and then install. And we do we did prepare uh, quite some automation scripts for you to help you to ease the reduce the efforts to install this uh, the suite like the EFS setup and simple setups and uh, documentation is coming soon. <clears throat> and uh, for this diagram is uh, as you can see we have uh, Internet Gateway is only connected to your public subnets. And uh, all your uh, master nodes and worker nodes are hosted in your private subnets. And uh, if if <coughs> if if you want to access your your master nodes uh, for administrator's purpose, you will need to log into your Dusty instance, so and then log in from there to to your master nodes. And uh, <coughs> For internet access from master node to to outside world is uh, you will need an NAT gateway or NAT instance to to run the Docker pool or FTP to get the images. After installation, most likely you can disable this part. <clears throat> and uh, this is another example which is more complex, uh, like uh, you can use ALB to connect to Apache and Apache to connect to our master nodes. This is also possible. And uh, you can use separate VPC as uh, your DMZ zone. The deployment flow for this one is uh, uh, you, you, you can prepare some uh, <coughs> uh, the foundations like FQDN, EIP, and then deploy your AWS infrastructure with your AWS team. So these two steps has to be done by your uh, AWS team or infrastructure team. Or you, you have if you have your own account, you can do that by yourself. And the third, third part is install the CDF. And uh, this one is uh, you can do that by yourself. So, uh, with the once you have your EC2 uh, access, you can do that, and then install the suite, and then finally can access the, the suite. So it's uh, more manually, but we provided some automation scripts to help you. Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, uh, a sample sizing for your reference. You can have more details for uh, in our sizing guide. So with this sizing, like uh, if you want to support 400 concurrent users, and you have a million records in semantics, you need to prepare uh, three master nodes for HA, 
So if you don't need HA, you just want to take the risk. One master node should be okay. And then three worker nodes and one Postgres. And also a EFS if you want to use that or you want to have a service for EFS, that's also possible. This, the estimated cost for this one is around uh, 3K or 2.6K dollars per month with uh, Postgres. So it's um, just give you um, some <coughs> feeling on, on how, how it looks like in sizing perspective. For more details, just go to the uh, official documentation. Um, any questions about the, the sizing or the deployment flows? Or is that clear? Okay. So tips. This is more um, the tips we is for uh, to help you to uh, set up the environments to reduce some some errors you may you may miss. So let me go through them one by one. Um, let's say the first one is always use external database like RDS for production deployment. Uh, uh, we have customers try to use server uh, embedded Postgres. And uh, that one is not for production usage. So you, you should not do that for your production at all. Uh, it will cost, let's say, um, as your Postgres, if embedded Postgres, sometimes uh, it may, um, if you start your servers or restart your servers, sometimes the data in the embedded uh, Postgres, it may lose data as well as sometimes it may block the system to start because it uh, may have some files cropped. So RDS is much more uh, stable, or at least you will need uh, external Postgres to set it up by yourself and to maintain it and with the uh, backups. And uh, so database is critical for the production. And the second one is use simple on each cluster nodes for production. And this this uh, is a recommendation from <coughs> Docker and Kubernetes, and we we tried that in in the lab as well. If you don't set up simple, the system will work. It works. However, the performance will will be very slow, and uh, even sometimes the system looks like it's not uh, responding. It's, it's because uh, Docker and Kubernetes do need simple to make sure it can use the, the disk in a sufficient way, so efficiently. So uh, make sure you set up simple for production uh, usage. It's also very important. The third one is uh, <coughs> uh, please prepare the resource based on the size using guide. Sometimes uh, you may think about that, say, uh, I want to set up an environment to support 400 users for the small size. But for, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to try it, so I just use small size, but give it less machines, so uh, less powers for the EC2 instance. It may be just, you may think it's just lower, but actually it will not work. So if you don't have enough resource, as how Kubernetes works is uh, it will just not start the service at all. If it doesn't, if it checks, I don't have enough resource, it will not start the pause, the service in the Kubernetes level at all, level at all. So you need to follow our sizing guide to prepare enough resource to install the suite. If you don't have enough resource, the installation will fail. It's um, expected because it's, we do have some checks in the in the system to make sure you have enough resource. It's not slower, but fair. <clears throat> the fourth one is uh, uh, please check your disk partition based on the sizing guide. Um, 
we have some we we have some usages on the uh, disk partitions. It's um, please just follow that, and uh, if you don't have some enough uh, uh, disks uh, for some folders like var wall or var lib, it, the system will will not working fine, not functional well. Um, for migrated customer sponsored scenarios, uh, you please prepare actual EBS for migration data and do not use EFS for migration. So as EFS is uh, not good for the uh, for this scenario, you just need to prepare actual EBS to store your migrated data and uh, after migration you can remove all the uh, all re <coughs> just remove the disk and uh, save save the money. That's possible. But uh, during the migration, please use the EBS. The next one is there is a uh, sightings, which is called source and destination check in the EC2 instance. This is a man mandatory uh, uh, setup. You have to disable that. It's a uh, because we are using a component which is called Flannel, and, and that that one is uh, I rely on this uh, this option. If you don't disable this option, the system will not function well. It's uh, it's a mandatory check. Uh, I, I saw many customers just forgot to disable this one. Although it's in the documentation, but uh, it's uh, just a very small step, and uh, people just sometimes miss this step. So next one is uh, uh, some explanation of our capabilities. Our master node HA is based on the KLIB-D. And uh, if you have uh, two master nodes down, the system is down. So you, so let's say you have three master nodes up and running. One is down, you can recover that. And, uh, you, and you have to recover that because if uh, you have the second one down, your system will be down. So you 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 need to fix the once something some error happens you please fix that state so you you need to fix that <clears throat> and in the next release uh, what we are working on is uh, we'll make the master nodes more works more like uh, load balanced instead of uh, uh, using KPLRD to make uh, to have Y as master two as backup but uh, uh, all of them will work like uh, uh, balanced, balanced for the uh, requests. <clears throat> uh, next one is uh, you need to change some OS parameters to improve sta uh, stability, and that is uh, uh, some let's say file handlers and some uh, OS uh, parameters you need to change, like uh, the packages uh, sizings. That is for um, prior performance testing. You need to change these uh, parameters to make your system more stable. You you may consult into your Linux uh, administrators for more details on that. It will be included in our uh, <coughs> manual setup uh, documentation on which parameters you need to change. Uh, for the marketplace uh, setup, it will be automatically uh, <coughs> changed. Also, for the marketplace setup and also the automated setup, the OS parameters will be changed automatically. Only for your manual setups, you need to change this OS parameters manually. <coughs> Another tip, if you choose to use EFS, there is uh, one thing is very important is uh, EFS first credits. As you see, uh, you you need to prepare some extra code for the EFS some, to gain your credits to provide better performance. And uh, if you run out of credits, your system will be very, very slow. This is an example. So let's see, uh, previously I have uh, 2T credits, and then one day I use it up, I used everything, and then you see I, I have almost zero credit. 
it, in that case, it will introduce a huge performance downgrade. So the throughput will be like this. So once I used up all my credits, the my throughput will be okay. I have 100. Uh, and this is the best performance. But uh, once I use 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 all the credits, it will down to 30. And uh, then because uh, AWS will provide some more credits um, in another minute, you are up to 100, but then you will be down to very slow. So it's like um, if you operate the EFS system, you will, you will feel the EFS just hung in. This is because you you used up all your credits. So you need to uh, monitor this uh, uh, first credits for the EFS. This is uh, critical if you choose to use EFS. Uh, for the EFS first credits, I'm not sure. I'm not quite 100 percent sure on the billing information. It's not related to billing. It's related to CloudWatch. So you have to have the ability to view the to use the CloudWatch and uh, to see how many credits do you have. And uh, as uh, <coughs> as the best practice, you just First of all, you just run a DD command to create some dummy files in your EFS, and then AWS will grant you some credits for use. That is uh, very important and will be in the <coughs> menu setup uh, uh, documentation as well. And for the automated setup, uh, you also need to do this by yourself as well. So create uh, uh, a big, a huge dummy file in the EFS to gain the uh, best performance. Okay. Mm. That's all the tips I prepared. And uh, uh, I'd like to show you some demos, demo for the, for the uh, system. And uh, hopefully you can have some and <coughs> have more ex experience on what I'm talking about. So the first thing first is I'd like to show you the our marketplace setup. I actually personally I like this setup very well. It's uh, really easy to use. Let's see. So you can search for Google AWS marketplace and then you will see this page. Just go to this one. <coughs> And in the search box, you just search for macro focus, uh, Swiss management automation. And then you will see that this is a subscription here. And version is uh, February. Release. You can click on this one. And uh, as you can see, you you all have some more details here. Like uh, this is based on cloud formation and uh, some estimated costs, um, like uh, three hundred dollars per month if you choose another region like uh, uh, Frankfurt. The price will change, and some some regions are quite expensive, like five hundred dollars. But uh, for demo purposes, you can use. Uh, some cheaper regions, and uh, that's it. I choose first input, and then I continue to subscribe. Click on this one. <coughs> Talking, <coughs> and then select the version. Oh, you need to select the February one. This is the latest. And uh, region is Frankfurt, and then click the launch. Launch. Let's launch the instance. This. <coughs> and uh, just don't change anything. We prepared this template for you already. 
So you just use this default template, click next. And then you can choose a name, select a region. So uh, uh, this is the availability zone from your region. I will use this 1B. And uh, your uh, FQDN, you need to prepare that in uh, root 53, or you can have your own uh, vendor uh, who can provide you uh, FQDN. And with uh, external access IP, uh, mine access IP, this is a public IP, like this one. And then the key is uh, the key pair. This is the key pair, EC2 key pair. You can prepare that uh, based on <coughs> OpenSSL, or you can create the key pairs uh, from AWS as well. <coughs> and uh, this is for VPC and CIDR block. Uh, and uh, this is for subnets. Just keep the default value, it should be fine. And put your own administrator's password. That's it. Just and uh, normally I will <clears throat> check this one. Look back on failure. I will check on no because I want to see why it's failure, and uh, then I can check the log. So I will change this option. That's the only one I may change. But if you don't change this, it's it's fine. Just for some debugging, if uh, it fails, and then next. Acknowledge, quit, and you will see some uh, quitting in progress. And this one will take around uh, <clears throat> one hour to finish, one hour, five minutes, something to finish. Depends on your region. So, and then you can you can set this uh, system uh, from your FQDN like this. So. My case is uh, xm xm dot item cs dot net like uh, four four three https something like this with uh, some more URLs bo and uh, uh, some extra uh, URL and uh, it the that one will list it here so you all you all just access that there you have more Guidances in the uh, in your marketplace as well, and that's it. That's for the demo for the <clears throat> marketplace setup. I I hope that this is uh, easy to use and uh, you can have a try soon. The second thing I'd like to show you is uh, for uh, automated setup. This is uh, a bit more complex compared to this one, but uh, it's still. Uh, should be uh, not that hard to handle. Uh, this one is from the, um, let's see, um, market test. <clears throat> so if you find out our <clears throat> a macro focus market base, you will see macro place, uh, macro focus. You will see this one, uh, February release in SMA. And uh, in this topic, you will have uh, uh, AWS Deployment Toolkit, this one. You can download this one. This is help you to in, in, install the uh, suite. Download this. And uh, after download, you will have a package that like this um, package <coughs> like this one. And then once you unzip that, you will have a Packer build and the call formation generator. And the Packer build is to help you to generate an AMI image. And then the call formation is to help you to generate a call formation template. And then you can use that one to install the, the CDF and the infrastructure. So the Packer build is like something like this. This is the one you need to run 
and there are some other uh, uh, <coughs> property files you need to change. Like uh, where is your uh, metadata uh, path? So the path is uh, you, you need to download uh, the metadata onto your uh, to your uh, S3. So this is uh, something you need to run like this. Just run after you run this one, you will have an AMI generated in the. Uh, let me show you. Um, <clears throat> I have some sensitive data in the Apple account, so cannot show you. Sorry. So it will have some AMI images. So um, and then with the script, and then with that Im AMI images, you can run this uh, call formation. So based on this Python file, you can generate a template, and then use this template in your call formation to just Packer will prepare for AMI. And then cloud formation will use the template and uh, to help you to generate the infrastructure and install CDF. Once that is finished, you can install on pause three thousand for the for the suite. And uh, for the manual setup, uh, it's uh, not enough time for demo purpose. So uh, we'll prepare for the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, for the documentation soon. So that's all I prepared for today. Any questions? There's a couple in the chat. I think you've answered um, <clears throat> some of them. There's a question about the documentation, but I think you've cleared that up. We'll look for early access to that. Um, when is it planned to have a suite managed, not external database for the product? Um, I so that's that's I think it's a it's a product management yeah, question, yeah. right? That's yeah. a roadmap question, which is probably not the scope of this uh, this uh, this webcast thing. So, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, we can um, check with the um, CDF team as well. At least we put that question to them. And actually, it's a maybe a good time to remind folks that there is. Um, an idea form where you can ask, uh, sorry, log uh, ideas and for enhancements and, and have others in the community. Um, I think maybe this one was answered. The uh, Are the OS parameters set properly when you use the deployment scripts from our marketplace? Yeah, <clears throat> it will be automatically set it up for marketplace setup and the automated setup. Okay, and I think you answered the next question about special permissions for the first uh, bus credits. And um, any advice on disaster recovery? Um, for disaster recovery, it's um, at, to me, of uh, disaster recovery is more, um, um, let's say, for AWS provided uh, many good things for disaster recovery, and uh, um, what we think is you can follow the AWS guidance, and if you need some more details, uh, guidance from us for speed level, we do prepare some uh, uh, backup and restore and uh, to help you to, to do your disaster recovery from speed level. So for infrastructure level, it uh, can be provided by AWS. So if you have any details, questions on disaster recovery, you can just come to us. Okay, any other questions folks want to come off of mute to ask anything additional? This is Ankit Desai here. I just wanted to add a 
one more comment on disaster recovery, right? So as part of our future roadmap, we are also working on a multi-easy deployment that will help with disaster recovery, right? So I know it's not complete disaster recovery, but multi-easy deployment will probably, will, we will we are working on it as part of our near-term roadmap. So that will help. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, with that, I think we can close the call. Thank you so much for the presentation today and for the questions from, from everyone. We'll be posting the recording in the practitioners forum. And um, we don't typically post the slides there, but I can send a PDF copy um, it, it, uh, as requested. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.